Hey everybody, Backpack Hack here coming at you with another trail tip. And I know I've done a couple videos in the past about how to read, understand, and interpret contour lines on a topographical map. And I'll put those up here as well as in the description below. But sometimes you come across somebody that is such an abstract concept that they just can't wrap their heads around it. Just like the projections of the globe onto a two-dimensional map. There's different ways to do that and a lot of people don't understand the differences between them. I'm not saying that they're stupid, they just can't wrap their head around it. They're just not wired to, to get it. When I come across somebody like that, the best way i found to teach them is to take them into a place where I have a topographical map and the scene in front of them in three dimensions and both of us are standing side by side. So I can point out that this is this, this is this, this is this over here, and they start to understand it. The problem is, is I'm coming at you in a two-dimensional world. You've got height and width, but you have no depth. You can't step to the side to see the world in a three-dimensional sense and be able to manipulate what you're seeing in the your screen or monitor or whatever you're looking at to watch this video. You can extrapolate depth. I mean, you can see that the trees are behind me, but you have no idea how far they are because you are only seeing it in two dimensions. So that's the biggest problem. So I came up with a way that I can put a three-dimensional object in front of you and show you the topographical map of that object on this screen. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to hold something up and you're going to see it on the screen. It will be between you and your screen or your monitor or whatever it is you're looking at this video. What I mean by this is I'm going to do a little bit of magic. I am going to create a topographical map of an object that's within your reach. It's right in front of you. You just need to know where to look. I don't care where on the face of this planet you are, or even if you're on the International Space Station for all I care, this is within a few feet of you. So what I want you to do is take your hand, your right hand, and hold it at about a 45 degree angle. Tuck your thumb in and wrap your fingers around your thumb. Hold your hand about like this, and this is the object we're going to do a topographical map study on. And I'm going to show you the topographical map of everything from the, my knuckles here around to the back of my hand. I'm not going to be talking about my fingers down here, my thumb, my wrist, or my arm. Just this area right here is this topographical map. Do you see it now? Now, when you do this, you now have a three-dimensional object in front of you along with this two-dimensional map. And you can actually turn and look and move your hand around and look at it at different angles. You can look straight down on it. You can look at it from the side. You can look at it from the front. You can look at it from the back. This way, you have a three-dimensional object right in front of you along with this map. And you can see now, hopefully, how these contour lines line up with the features on your hand if that were an actual physical geologic structure. So let's go over some of them. When you hold your hand with your thumb tucked in and your fingers wrapped around your thumb, and you have these at about a 45 degree angle to horizontal, you have a three-dimensional object that is represented by this topographical map. And hopefully by overlaying these two like this, you can see the back of my hand as well as the topographical lines, the, the contour lines, on the back of my hand. So it'll give you an idea of how this line that goes between my fingers would tend to have these V's in them like this. How these would be little circles as my knuckles here. How this would be a bunch of lines close together. And this is the nice thing is you can turn this and get an idea in three dimensions right in front of yourself how this actually works. So hopefully this helps you understand this. And let's pretend that this is not my hand but an actual geographic feature that you're looking at in real life. So let's go over some of the common terms that you might find in this geographic feature. The back of your hand would be a slope or a face. Your knuckles would be hills, mounds, peaks, mountain tops, mountain peaks, terms like that. The line between those 
knuckles or peaks would be a ridge or a ridge line. Between them would be a draw, a path, a saddle, or a gap. The area around your knuckles or the peaks would be a range. The sharp drop-offs on either side of your hands, like here and here, might be considered a cliff or a drop, a drop-off, or an escarpment. The fingers could be considered a spur, an outcropping, or an outlook. Between the fingers, you would have a valley, a gully, a wash, or in some parts of the southwest United States, called an arroyo. And if there was water running through these, you might call it a river, a stream, or a creek. So that's all there is to understanding contour lines and how they represent themselves in the 3D physical world and some of the terms that we might use to describe those geographic features. So hopefully this has helped you understand a topographical map and contour lines and hopefully you can extrapolate between what's on your hand to what's out there in the physical world. Now I'm going to throw this topographical map back up on the screen here for a couple seconds. So if you want to grab a screenshot of it, go right ahead. I'm not going to claim any copyrights to it. You can freely distribute it however you want. Because it's the back of my hand, it's the back of your hand. I don't know if you can, could copyright it. Anyway, hopefully that helps you understand contour lines and topographical maps a little bit better. So this is Backpack Hat coming at you with this trail tip. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment on my videos. Be safe out there, and I'll see you out on the trail.